Hey guys, what's going on? Today's video, we're going to be going over Hercules, the new card that came out to Marvel Snap this week and highlight the likely best deck he fits in right now in the current meta and current state of move. And unfortunately, he's not doing anything tremendous in the game. He's probably the worst card that's come out to the game at this point, and he didn't do anything significant to move move anywhere further up into the tier list in terms of a competitive archetype but he can be extremely fun and his interaction with craven can lead to some wacky and awesome power bursts that your opponent might not be prepared for so you can win and you will steal cubes with this deck people are not expecting the amount of power you're going to produce with the move and a lot of you are going to be new into the move archetype so don't be frustrated when you're playing you're gonna you're going to lose a lot of games, you're going to lose cubes, because there is a higher learning curve in this deck archetype, but I suggest to fight through it, because someday move is going to be extremely powerful, and having that knowledge base is just going to help you out and become a better player. And like always, we're going to break the deck down into the two key components of your must-haves, your must-includes, and your flex cards. So without further ado, let us get into this craving some move deck. One of the main issues with the move archetype has been and has always been that it's kind of awkward to do the moving. So the key with this deck is that I've focused on just throwing in all the lower cost moving elements into the deck and it really helps make it a little less clunky when you're moving things around. So. We have Iron Fist and Ghost Spider as must-haves as they are one cost with a move capability. Obviously Ghost Spider is a little more flexible than Iron Fist as he can only really move things to two locations. You can't play anything to the left so he's a little clunky in that aspect. But they're both very important to help move around your targets which are Dagger and Vulture as your main power carries that are going to give you the opportunity to win the game and you don't need to be aggressive with these cards don't be afraid to pass on turns one and two sometimes even three you're going to want to be able to use your move combinations effectively and efficiently so make sure you're holding on to them and using them appropriately whether it's going to be on a dagger on a vulture on a human torch whatever you're using in your move deck you want to make sure you're taking advantage of your lower cost move and we are using dr strange as another move he's very important to this deck because if you say are ramping up earlier you're gonna have bigger move minions and you can kind of throw them around in a way that your opponents aren't going to be able to necessarily easily shang chi or shadow king them so you're going to want to be able to have all the options and dr strange with his buff down to a 2-3 is significantly better than when he was a 3-3 and craven is one of the keys of this deck in my opinion he works very well with hercules in his new release uh and obviously with all the other move in the deck he works very well as well uh, you don't necessarily always have to throw him into the left lane anymore for him to be super effective. I think he's just as good in the middle location in this deck, and he will surprisingly bounce up to 8-12 power easily in a game if your draw is well, and he can get crazy big if your opponent is playing any move as well. And based on your draw and what you're doing and what you're working with, I would also even consider you make him your move target so you can throw the opponent off on just what your gameplay strategy is to win and just moving your power from one location to the next. That's the key of this deck really is your unpredictability for your opponent. And next is the new card, Hercules. He is a solid move option in terms of his ability. I think he's a little heavily priced in four energy i'm hoping in the future they're gonna buff him down to a lower lower power lower cost card and i think he'll be really really strong but right now i suggest if you're going to be playing move decks hercules fits in there and he's probably best to be played in the left location in most situations and he can really bounce things around and make things unpredictable for your opponent and can boost up your cravens and your vultures and your daggers extremely well and finally heimdall he has never really had a 
strong presence in the meta and he still is not going to have a super strong presence in the meta but his ability is very strong with your aspects focusing on the craven and the hercules combination he's a strong turn six play that people don't really expect so he can move things into your hercules lane if you're playing him in the left like your vulture or your dagger and you could send two of them into the left lane and he'll bounce the first one to a different lane so you can all of a sudden spread that power out more i also think heimdall is likely to be a target for a buff at some point in the future 6 8 is just very weak for what he does currently with the level of move so i wouldn't be surprised to see him move up to a 6 9 which would make him even stronger than he is right now and moving on to the flex positions you'll see there is a ton of flex in this deck because there are quite a few movement options you can work with and the meta is not in favor of move right now so you really kind of have to play with the deck to really effectively use it to win and outwit your opponent so we have first off have human torch i've included him as a flex card just to have a another option that is ramping up and gaining power throughout the game uh he's not as consistent as dagger or vulture in terms of getting large and staying alive but he's, he's a nice he can even be used as a distraction for your your opponent to go after and destroy potentially and you can then focus on your buildup of dagger and vulture to help you win the game and i've been including cloak in the list now as a, another move option he provides a lot of move for multiple cards which is extremely useful later in the game so i don't suggest ever playing him early but he is a strong a 2-4 stat line is also surprisingly good in terms of winning a tighter location in terms of power i think he's pretty valuable he's probably borderline must have at this point i would say so definitely add cloak into your list and i've added shadow king back into this list and he's been pretty consistent because you're still going to run out into these larger thanos blob lists out there and sometimes you're just not going to be able to compete up with them based on how your draw went out and if you are got shadow king in your hand he is an extremely good counter to blob that a lot of people are still not uh prepared for so he is a good flex card at this point i would say and he's more consistent than shang chi because kyera is blocking the ability for these six drops to be killed and if you're finding issues in terms of movement happening to like buff up your craven I think Silk is a good include and a good flex spot in this deck. She's a 2-5, which is a very good stat line, obviously, and she's going to be moving around constantly, so there's always a chance that she's going to hit into your Craven location and continue to buff up his power. And if you're really getting different with your deck list, Zabu is a very, very good card to go with Hercules. I, like I was saying earlier in the video, I think Hercules is overpriced at a fork energy he could definitely be a three energy with a different stat line. But what do you do with four cost cards in this game right now? You play Zabu and he helps out significantly. So don't sleep on Zabu helping out your Hercules plays if you're trying to do a more four cost heavy. Maybe you're doing something with Spider-Man 2099 and uh, Stegron, for example. And finally, I have Magneto in there as the other alternate six drop we're using besides Heimdall. His stat line is much better than Heimdall and sometimes Heimdall is just not a great option on your turn six, so you'd rather have the opportunity to play a Magneto and move some things around on your opponent's side of the board to give you the potential victory and some extra cubes. And guys, remember, if you made it this far into the video, please uh, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think of the deck. Let me know what you think of Hercules. It really helps out me and the channel a lot. And with that, let's get into some of the high level gameplay slash infinite gameplay. And first up, we have Astral Badger here. And this is a decent starting hand, but we're gonna wanna keep Iron Fist in our hand and wait appropriately to play him. Vormir and Avengers Compound are kind of an irrelevant location. We're just gonna throw Iron Fist into Vormir to not have that trigger and set up our Vulture for the next turn. And we're just gonna throw a Vulture here in Westview, get him into the middle location and kind of work on our strategy from there and zabu is extremely strong as always but well, unluckily for him it turned into a super flow so we're gonna just go ahead and throw craven under our vormir and cloak and we're gonna get another trigger of our vulture to buff him up a little more 
And samurai away our Shadow King is not the worst thing. And I'd rather have the two other cards in our hand. And we're just going to go ahead and move Vulture. And since we have that extra energy, we're going to play Magneto now and save a potential Heimdall next turn. And he moves stuff over, so he bumps up our Craven a little bit. And unluckily, that Gambit just destroyed our Magneto, so we're a little behind. So we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to assume he's going to think he's won the middle lane here. So I'm going to use Doctor Strange and I'm going to throw over the Vulture to the Avengers compound to try to sneakily win that and hope he doesn't even compete in the left com location. And he goes with all right, and that's a, that's a victory. And next up we have War Machine here, and this is a fairly strong opening hand with a dagger and the Ghost Spider and Cloak, so we got a lot of movement. And the Onslaught Citadel and Dark Dimension are mid locations for us. We don't care really either way on them. We're going to try to not let this Nebula get out of hand, so I'm probably going to end up playing in the right lane here. Oh, and a District X, so we're not playing with our deck anymore, but we're going to throw Dagger right here to slow down Nebula, and we're going to get a double hit here in the left lane from our Ghost Spider with Dagger. And Dakin's not that worrisome for us, and we got a Cloak with our random card, so we're going to double Cloak here, and we're going to get another Dagger hit, and we're going to throw Arrow left lane. That's another strong movement card we got randomly that's going to help mess up this guy's gameplay strategy and we get to fill in this onslaught citadel and ooh, he's got a blob that's tough for us we're not gonna be able to win this left lane now but ghost spider is an incredible random draw so arrow being our last card we played i think we're gonna arrow right lane and compete heavy to win it and hopefully he's just not gonna play a ton of power in the middle lane here so Maybe the Punisher Iron Fist combination with our Cloaks for power is enough. And he Modox, which isn't going to be enough to beat the Arrow, and his Miss Marvel in the middle is not going to be enough, so that is going to be a victory for us. And finally, we have Sarissana. And the Human Torch Dagger is not the greatest starting hand. And we're not going to throw Human Torch out there to let him know anything. And Craven is still usually the best in the left lane, so we're gonna go ahead and plop him there. And he is gonna do nothing on turn two, so I don't really know what he's playing at this point. And I'm just gonna pass, our hand is low cost. And the Rhino is not really gonna do anything to us. We're gonna go ahead and play our dagger ghost spider combination to just get some power on the board it's turn four it's getting a little later and a black widow with a widow's bite in a valley of the hand is not great that means we're gonna get this widow's bite destroyed and it's just gonna come back but we're gonna do that anyways because we're gonna cloak in the middle lane and that might just win it for us and he might not be able to fight it and it will still give a buff to craven and human torch and a bast with that play it's a pretty weak play. I'm not really sure what he's trying to do here. So we're just going to probably play around with our movement here and just play Magneto for the 12 power. And I don't, don't think he's going to be able to contend. Yeah, and he decided he wanted out of there. And that is a, another victory. And guys, I want to say thank you if you made it all the way to this point in the video. I really appreciate it if you watched the whole thing and you enjoyed the gameplay and the deck breakdowns. So remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you're looking forward to in terms of deck content coming out in the future. And I will see you on the next one.